So to one and all, no, again, good morning. Uh, we are recording our uh, lecture this morning. And uh, as, a, as a continuation of our topic on motion, we will try to extend it now, not only on horizontal line no, motion or straight line motions in the horizontal axis, but we will now go vertical. No? We understand that motion could happen no, in almost every kind of direction. No? There are motions that are occurring no, in a circular way. There are motions that are occurring no, uh, like the one that is happening in a disk. So a hard disk no, is kind of going around in motion, no, but it is rotational. No? There are also types of motions that you may think no like the planets no around the sun or the moon no or satellites around a given planet no they go around about but it's not similar to uh, a motion no, that is occurring like an electric fan or a disc no so we refer to the planets going around a certain body as circular motion no? now uh what is with this uh vertical motion no, that uh Einstein, or I, I believe no, this is Isaac Newton. No? So the guy that you are seeing right now, no, we can say that he is Sir Isaac Newton, no? the famous guy that uh, I don't know no, if the story is right. No? He was uh, sitting underneath a, an apple tree and some, uh, some kind of uh, uh, thing no, that he observes that, he, that, that, that apple no? that falls on him. No? He finds uh, some unique uh, interest on it, no? why it is falling down. No? And uh, we understand that he eventually came about, no? so Sir Isaac Newton came about some principles called uh, Isaac Newton's loss of motion. No? So he formulated eventually this loss of motion that we will still discuss no? in the upcoming lesson. No? Now, what, what is our focus today? We will talk about no, the free-falling body no, or bodies that fall no, by virtue of the action of gravity. No? And uh, again, no, similar to Isaac Newton, that is the one that we will try to uh, understand today. No? Okay, so moving on, no, we, uh, we will talk about free-falling body no, or we call it uh, a freely-falling body. Now, for Isaac Newton, no, he was able to understand no, this concept of gravity. No? And he noticed that gravity, no, uh, we may not be able to explain where does gravity really come from, no? but the, the gravitational force that we are experiencing is relatively no, uh, due to a certain amount of mass. No? So there are two bodies that are exerting uh, or possess no, some, some mass. No? In our case, we have the earth where we are standing on. No? So that's maybe one mass, no? mass number one, no? mass of the earth. And the mass of the earth compared to our own mass no, is considerably big. No? The, the earth is several million times probably no, bigger than our, other than our own mass. No? So we could not even compare our own mass. Our own mass no, is very negligible compared to that of the earth. No? Now, ver by virtue of this mass that we see, no, uh, then it creates something like a phenomenon in nature called gravity no? or gravitational force. No? And they observe that the bigger this mass no, that is present, then the greater is the gravitational force no, that exists. No? So for example, if we compare the earth, no, the earth's gravity no, with the moon's gravity, no? Uh, the moon is a satellite no, that goes around the earth. Now, if you try to compare that, no, we observe that the moon's gravity is relatively smaller compared to that of the earth. No? And again, no, the reason is that the mass, no, which is also related to the size of the planet, no, is relatively smaller compared to the earth. No? So therefore, there's something in this mass no, that creates uh, the action or the, the, the effect or the outcome of gravity. No? 
So we will therefore now con can conclude that if a certain body in space no, is more massive, then it will have a greater no, uh, degree of gravity. No? Now, there are things in our universe that we don't actually see. No? And uh, that's what they believe to have to possess no? so much amount of gravity. No? Like, for example, the concept of a black hole. No? We don't know exactly what that is, no? but they believe that, that that black hole in the universe no? is so uh, probably massive. No? It's so massive that even light, no? light itself cannot escape its gravity. No? So light, if it happens to go near no, a black hole, it will get trapped no, in that black hole. It will, it will be pulled by the gravity of that black hole. No? Again, no, that's, a, that's a concept, that's an idea no, that they believe exists in our universe. No? But I don't know no, if they've actually seen one because you cannot actually see something that does not produce light. No? So if light is being sucked by the thing called uh, black hole, then... How could we see it? No? So it's quite impossible. No? Now, our understanding of light, we will understand it better no, in our physics too. No? But for now, masses have a certain effect on gravity. No? And again, no, the distance between the objects no, uh, is also a, a factor that affects the gravitational pull. No? So S there is some kind of a distance. No? Now, the eventual result there now is the gravitational pull, which we will call as F. And that value F again now is related first to mass. And then next, now, another factor that affects it is the distance between these two masses. Now, now what they say is if the distance are closer, now, if you put objects together not to be much more closer now, to each other, then now, their force of attraction will be also uh, greater. No? Okay, now let's look at mass. No? So the first factor that we'll try to consider is the mass of a body. No? So which one will have a greater friction, uh, gravitational pull? No? Is it F1, the two smaller masses above, or is it F2, no? the bigger, relatively bigger masses below? No? So which one will have a greater force. Is it F2 will have a greater gravitational force or F1? No? Now we will see that by virtue of masses, no, and if uh, M1 and M2 are equal and smaller M1 and smaller M2 are also equal. And however, no, compared to no, capital letter M and small letter M, no, Capital letter M is heavier or more massive. No? So it has more mass. No? So by virtue of its dimension drawn as well, now we can say that capital letter M masses are much more heavier no? or bigger no? than small letter M's, M1 and M2. No? Now we conclude here that their gravitational force is also greater. No? So F2 will have a bigger gravitational force. No? But prim primarily because of its mass. No? So mass is directly proportional no? to the product of the masses is directly proportional to the gravitational force. No? Now let's look at another factor here. No? So first factor is mass. Next factor is what if we will try to adjust the distance no? of the masses? No? We try to pull them uh, away from each other. No? So for our first illustration, we keep the distance the same, no? but we change the mass. No? We have bigger masses for illustration one, but the same distance. No? Now, what if we will have the same distance? Oh, no, the different distances, but the same masses. No? So if we will increase the, the distance between the two objects. No? So S2 now is farther no? compared to S1. And supposing our masses there, no? small letter M1 and big letter M1 are equal no? in dimension. No? Now, increasing the distance, what happens to the gravitational force F1 and F2? No? Now, we will see that F2 now will become lesser. No? So therefore, no? we, can, we can probably say there that if we will try to move objects further apart, no? then they will tend to have no lesser gravitational force. No? 
and probably that is the same the same no or the same thing now we notice that if an object is further away from the earth no then the pull of the earth's gravity is also you know, getting lesser and lesser no? up to a point when if you go higher now from the ground you may not probably feel anymore the gravitational pull now there is a distance from the planet earth now that you will become no weightless or there's no more no gravity no so it's a um, gravity free environment no okay now um so gravity no? so gravity gravitational force is affected inversely now by the square of the distance between the objects no so when it is directly proportional to the product of the masses it is inversely proportional to the square of its distance no? now if you'll try try to make not the equation there equal now and this is now our complete no? proportion then when we make it equal then we will have to add no a constant called g no? and g is known as the gravitational constant no? its value no is roughly something like 6 no 6 i think 6.7 and uh, that is no uh, raised to what 10 to negative 11 something no? so uh, that's a constant no that we add no to our equation to make our previous equation earlier no equal no so this letter g no? Okay, so that's about the gravitational no, law. No? So law of gravitation that is formulated by Newton no? is having that principle. No? So we have uh, every particle in the universe attracts each other. No? The gravitational force is directly no, proportional to the product of the masses of the particles. So between me and the Earth, no? There's gravity that exists now because I have a mass and the earth is also having a mass. No? My distance is also very close to the earth so I can feel no, the gravity, no, gravitational pull of the earth. No? Now, just imagine if the earth does not have no, a gravitational pull. No? Then all of us no, will be flying in the air. No? We could not probably no, put things in our, uh, in our house no, because they may be lifting no, or lifted up. No? So again, no, to some extent, gravity is kind of good no, because it keeps things in order no, or keeps them no, intact on the ground. No? We have also an atmosphere. There's air. We have, uh, we have clouds. No? We have uh, raindrops because, again, no, we have gravity. No? Unlike the moon that does, does have gravity but very, very small, no? It cannot hold any atmosphere at all. No? So uh, the living condition no? or the existence of life in the moon may be probably remote, no? even impossible, no? because there's no atmosphere in the moon. No? Okay, Again, no? by virtue of the very, very no? minimal amount of gravity. No? They, they compute it at around a sixth, no? one-sixth only no? that of the Earth, no? which is similar to the dimension or the size of the moon compared to the earth no? okay so that's uh something no? now when objects now are lifted from the ground no? they kind of uh, accelerate downward no? and from our knowledge of uh, uniformly accelerated motion no? we understand that we have a third type of motion we understand last time no? that when 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 it has a constant acceleration that the body you now keeps on increasing its speed no but it's in, but it's increasing its speed no is kind of steady no? so we call it uniformly accelerated motion now one example of this uniformly accelerated motion is a freely falling body no? now how do we how do we illustrate a freely falling body no? okay now you can just uh, Think of it now, like for example, now you have a piece of paper, now like like this one. Now. So this is a piece of paper, and uh, maybe you now you can uh, you can probably lift it at a distance. Well, again, now if you consider a piece of paper and you hold it now at a certain height, now so I, I cannot really you now project a piece of paper here. Now, so this white paper now. 
So if you're going to to uh, hold it no, at a certain height and release this, no, what do you think will happen to this piece of paper as I release it from my hand? This one will most likely go down. So it will go down. No? Now, if I'm going to have another piece of paper, the same size, no, a short size bond paper, one is one is uh, no, uh, completely no. Uh, it's it's a whole no. Uh, it's a whole uh, short size bond paper, no, wide, no. And I have another one which I'm going to crumple. No? So I have two, no. One which is a crumpled piece of paper and one which is a wider piece of paper, and I'm going to hold them at a certain height. No? Now, what if I'm going to release both papers together? No, one, no short size bond paper which is not crumpled and another one which is crumpled no and i'm going to release them no? what will happen to both of them will they go down yes sir yes sir we believe that assuming that there's no uh there's no interference for them no then they will all go downward no now will they will they go downward together no sir no sir which one will reach no the sir which one will reach the ground first? Uncrumpled the paper. Crumpled, the crumpled paper. No, but are their masses different? Are their masses different? No. So if they are both short size bond paper, one is crumpled and one is not. No. Is their mass different? No, sir. So maybe no. No. So no, if they will not reach the the ground together, no, is it because of their mass? Is it because of their mass that they don't reach the ground together? Or is it because of the air? No? Air resistance. Air resistance. You know, it's due to something like what we call no, air resistance. No? So air resistance uh, uh, plays a role. No? But if we will put those two objects no, in a complete vacuum, no? like let's say there is a, there's a space that we can remove, no? all air no and we could do an activity and we drop them together no will they reach now the ground at the same time yes sir yes sir most likely no yes no so uh air therefore no plays a huge role no in the falling of an object no but nonetheless no if we will try to remove it no then maybe now they can accelerate no all at the same time no okay so Again, no, this acceleration probably no, could be observed better no, in a vacuum rather than no, in an environment where there's the presence of air. No? Okay, now in centimeters per second, no, so we kind of equate all of them, no, but some values here, like, like 9.8, no, this is this has a unit of meters per second square. If it's in centimeter, then it is 980 centimeters per second square. No? While in feet per second square, it's 32. 32.2, no? others would write it as 32.2, others would just write it as 32 no? feet per second square. No? Well, again, now this is how uh, the body is accelerating. No? And definitely, now this direction is always downward. No? Okay, acceleration due to gravity, you know, is uh, this thing, no? for example, like uh, we have an object that is falling, no? like from rest, no? so it goes down. No? Initially, when you are holding it, no? maybe there's no uh, velocity there no? because it is completely at rest. No? But when you start to release it no? and you remove your hand from the object, then the gravity now acts on the object and during the first second no, it will probably travel at 9.8 meters per second no? so please remember now this is a speed and this should be no, uh meters per second lang, no? okay so we will try to remove two there now because that is a speed no? so allow me to erase this two no? So that is 9.8 meters per second. Now you'll notice in the next interval, in the next interval, 
the the following interval the object will now travel at another no 9.8 no so by the second interval no it should be around 19.6 no so allow me to change the value here no so in the next interval no the body will now be traveling at around 19.6 no meters per second no that's on the next second no? Now, what do you think is the value after the third second? Huh? What will be the value during the third second? In the succeeding interval, it will become 29.4. No? And it will happen no? if this object is at a certain no? height, no? it is placed at a higher distance, that it will increase and it will increase its speed. No? And again, no? what value is being added? It is equal to 9.8. No? meters per second square no? okay so that is a what no what what type of motion is that that is uniformly accelerated motion no so that uh, that is the one that we shown before no so again no? uh, our standing question is like this now if this is if this object is placed now one kilometer up no? it is placed at a very high altitude no nine uh, maybe no one kilometer up no like a raindrop no? can it increase its speed infinitely now as it strikes the ground no? now just imagine this now this is three seconds after and its speed is already 29.4 now what if it is placed no one kilometer up the ground no? so maybe you know it will take no, a longer time no, for it to reach the ground no? Now, can it increase its speed infinitely? Your discussion, uh, uh, we, again, we are, we, are, we are confounded with the idea that if a raindrop no, is one kilometer up and it starts to go down, no, then it must increase its speed no, even more larger than 29.4 that, that, that we are seeing right now. No? And if it is increasing its speed, despite the fact that it is water, it can still kill no, people. No? But why is it that a raindrop does not kill us when we are under the rain? Again, it's because of the air friction, no? because there's air. No? Now, the presence of air creates this thing which we call as, uh, we, we have there a phenomenon no, that we call as uh, something like a, an air friction no, that, that kind of slowed down no, the effect of the falling of an object. No? Like, for example, a parachute, for, for instance, no? if somebody no, jumps out a plane and it is wearing a parachute, you'll notice that that, that guy no, in the parachute will speed, no? speed up no? as, it, as he descends, but it will come to a point that he, that he will drop no? relatively constant. No? And uh, I think they call it as uh, terminal velocity. No? The word there is terminal velocity. No? At some point when we are falling, we reach this thing we call as terminal velocity. No? And when you reach terminal velocity, no, your fall will become constant. No? So again, no, it's impossible that an object that falls no, will increase and increase its speed infinitely. No? Because at one point, it will reach its terminal velocity. No? Or very small. So somebody which has an infection, no, like a lung infection, if the terminal velocity you know, of microbes are so small, microbes can float in the air infinitely. You know? So, sa isa kagabi, you know, kung may harap na infected na tao, kag nag-aubo siya, nag you know? ang iyan nga gin-release nga microbes you know, will float in the air, you know, maybe you know, for the entire night. You know? And all of you, you know, could get infected you know, in that way. You know? And I think you know, some some idea about this thing called the variants now of COVID-19 that becomes airborne. No? Maybe we can also attribute that to that kind of concept of terminal velocity. No? Why are you contaminated? No? And why do we keep the air no, in a room open? No? It's because no, we want to move away no, the microbes out of our house no? because there's a moving air. No? But if the room is confined, then maybe all of us will be inhaling no, that same microbe no, uh, that, that infects everybody. No? So for, uh, for this one again, no, maybe we will 
postpone some of this, no? maybe next time. But as an introduction, no? our equations for motion before, no? when we derive a few of our equations before, no? uh, we will have the same sets of equations here. No? So for freely falling body, our equations that are applicable in our horizontal motions are also applicable here in this vertical motion. No? But however, no, our acceleration here is used no, as a constant value and not a variable anymore. No? So for our acceleration A, we can call it as G. No? And G, which is acceleration due to gravity, is the same no, to be 9.8 no, meters per second no, for every second. Okay, so uh, G here is kind of constant. No? So what are things that affects the gravitational acceleration? One is latitude. No? How far are we from the equator? So maybe you know, the equator will have a greater pull no? Of gravity. So if we are far from the equator, maybe we will experience lesser gravity. Huh? Next is so if you move higher no, from the equator, then we may experience lesser gravity. Huh? Altitude, no, if you move far from the from far from the ground. No? So if the ground is the sea level, then if we move higher, no, like we take a uh, a plane, no? maybe higher up, we will have lesser gravity. No? Now, another is when we are in land, no? in surfaces that is hard no? compared to surfaces that are in water, no? maybe there's also no? an effect on gravity. No? Land is, could probably, no? we could experience greater amounts of gravity when we are on. Uh, the lithosphere, no? lithosphere, lithosphere among mga rocks, no? mountainous areas. But if we are on the ocean, no? then maybe no? there's also no? lesser pull of gravity in those places. No? Now, basically, no? this is our equation no? in our motion no? before. And we are going to change some of the equations there no? to G, no? Uh, the previous equation A you know, last time. So, for example, final velocity last time is VI plus AT. So, since our initial velocity becomes zero, then we can probably say that what is left is merely AT. You know? A for acceleration and T for time. You know? And if A is changed into gravity G, you know? so the acceleration becomes G no, as a notation. So what is left is VF could be equals to GT. Now, now this one is uh, an example when you hold a body at height and you drop it. No? So you hold a paper and then you release it, it falls down. Then these are applicable equations. No? So free falling body. No? Now there's another condition when we throw a body upward. No? So we can we can have it thrown downward also, no? Okay, or we can let it fall. No? So uh, from our rectilinear motions, we were able to have three equations earlier, no? And when we now transition to free falling body, since v sub i is zero, then we could end up with g times t, no? Now uh, when we have an object that is thrown downward, no? So instead of simply uh, holding and releasing it, no? What if we throw it down? No? Then therefore, no, then we will now have an initial velocity here. No? We will then have an initial velocity here. No? And still, no, we will have our gravitational pull, no, G, and then multiplied by T. No? And then the same is true for distance and this third equation below. No? So here are our related equations, and we have an analogy for them. No? Uh, and again, now we will explain them better maybe no, next meeting. No? Okay, do you have a question, guys?